In 2016, a notable incident unfolded in Maine involving the disappearance of 34-year-old Valerie Tiemann from a Walmart parking lot while her husband Luke was shopping. Upon his return to the car, Valerie was nowhere to be found, prompting an immediate police investigation. However, the case took an unexpected turn soon after. Valerie Joy Harmon, born on December 31, 1981, in Salem, Virginia, to Sarah Jean Samsung Harmon and Jean Ellen Harmon, she graduated from Hampton Park Christian School in 2000 and later attained her cosmetology degree from Bob Jones University. Valerie was remembered for her warm smile and outgoing nature. Valerie had a passion for drama and speech, alongside her love for music, often showcasing her talents on the piano and flute. Utilizing her cosmetology skills, she contributed to salons, spas, and pageants, uplifting others by enhancing their appearance. In her personal life, Valerie was involved with Matt Goodchow, whom she met through mutual acquaintances when she was around 22 years old. Despite their differing personalities, Valerie being outgoing and cheerful, and Matt more reserved, they found harmony in their relationship. They tied the knot in 2004 and settled into Matt's modest abode after their honeymoon, initially enjoying marital bliss. However, as time passed, Valerie's parents observed shifts in her demeanor, particularly concerning Matt's stringent control over their finances. Consequently, Valerie opted to establish a separate bank account to secure some personal savings. As time went on, Matt's behavior became increasingly controlling, with him placing blame on Valerie for their family's issues. Despite enduring emotional pain, Valerie reached her limit. After a decade of marriage, she sought a fresh start and divorced Matt. Luke entered her life, offering support and helping her move past her past troubles. With a decade of military service, including deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, Luke appeared as a dependable figure to Valerie. Her family noticed her returning happiness, reminiscent of her demeanor from a decade prior. On June 6, 2014, Valerie and Luke exchanged vows, beginning a new chapter together. They initially resided in Luke's parents' home in Fairfield, Maine, while Valerie's parents remained in South Carolina. In August 2016, after a visit to Valerie's family in South Carolina, they returned to Maine. Valerie's last communication with her mother, Sarah Jean Harmon, occurred via text messages on August 18, 2016. On August 24, 2016, witnesses reported seeing Luke with a woman he had recently connected with on Facebook, engaging in intimate activities. It appeared Valerie discovered this affair. That night, Valerie made 31 phone calls to Luke within five hours. On August 25, 2016, a mutual friend of Luke and Valerie reached out to Valerie via messenger, informing her of Luke's involvement with other women and claiming they were separated. Valerie responded with messages expressing her heartbreak but also her faith in God's plan, affirming Luke would never find a better woman than her. The following day, on August 26, 2016, Luke moved into the home of the woman he was having an affair with, falsely informing her that Valerie had run off with another man. Despite her routine calls to her parents in South Carolina, they couldn't reach Valerie for over a week. Unable to reach their daughter despite numerous attempts, Sarah Jean and Alan Harmon decided to reach out to Luke for information. After texting him, Luke responded a day later, assuring them that he and Valerie were doing well and expressing his love for her. However, after an additional 13 days passed without any contact from Valerie, her parents grew increasingly worried. They then contacted Luke's father, seeking answers. Shockingly, Luke's father informed them that they hadn't seen Valerie for approximately two weeks and that she was now missing. He also inquired about what should be done with Valerie's belongings. Following the disturbing revelation from Luke's father, Helen confronted Luke about why he hadn't informed them about Valerie's disappearance. Luke explained that he had been waiting for Valerie to contact her parents, as he didn't want to speak ill of her and still held love for Valerie and her family. He claimed that Valerie had left him for another man, expecting her to inform her parents about their breakup. However, Sarah Jean and Alan found this explanation implausible, as it contradicted Valerie's character and her close relationship with them. They were certain Valerie wouldn't have disappeared without reaching out, knowing it would cause them distress. 
On September 9, 2016, Allen took action by filing a missing persons report with the Fairfield Police Department. Detectives initiated an investigation, starting with a visit to Luke's parents' residence, where Valerie had been living. They spoke with Luke's mother, Laurel Timmons, who stated she had no knowledge of Luke and Valerie's whereabouts. As the detectives departed without gathering any significant information, it became evident to Valerie's parents that Laurel Timmons, Luke's mother, possessed an imposing demeanor. They believed that living under the same roof as Laurel wasn't easy for Valerie. Two weeks into Valerie's absence, Laurel took it upon herself to pack all of Valerie's belongings into garbage bags. This action spoke volumes about Laurel's attitude toward her daughter-in-law. It seemed she harbored little concern for Valerie's well-being and was primarily focused on clearing space in the house by disposing of her belongings. The police's efforts to locate Luke Tamin proved futile as he remained elusive, neither appearing at his residence nor providing a clear whereabouts. However, five days following Valerie's disappearance, Luke himself contacted the police upon hearing of their desire to speak with him. During the questioning, Luke's responses raised suspicions. He claimed that about two weeks prior, he and Valerie had stopped by the local Walmart to purchase groceries. While Luke went inside to shop, Valerie remained in the car in the parking lot. Upon his return, Valerie was inexplicably missing. Luke asserted that he attempted to contact her via calls and texts, expressing his intent to pick her up. Additionally, he mentioned that their marriage was deteriorating. Luke asserted that Valerie had mentioned another man in conversation, leading him to suspect she was cheating on him with this individual. However, he lacked details about the man's identity, believing Valerie had run away with him. Contrary to Luke's claims, Valerie's family had no knowledge of anyone other than Luke in her life. The police, finding the entire narrative suspicious, from Valerie's vanishing act at the Walmart parking lot to the disposal of her belongings in garbage bags, appealed to the public via media platforms. They circulated Valerie's photo and urged anyone with information on her recent whereabouts to come forward. Detectives found Luke's lack of proactive efforts to locate his wife unsettling, speculating whether he was preoccupied with another woman. To unravel the mystery, investigators visited the Walmart where Luke and Valerie were last seen on the day of Valerie's disappearance. Surveillance footage from both outside and inside the Walmart provided a crucial avenue for investigating Luke's story. However, upon reviewing hours of footage, investigators made a startling discovery. Neither Luke's red pickup truck nor Valerie appeared in any of the recordings. This revelation indicated that Luke had misled the police, deepening suspicions surrounding his involvement. With this newfound knowledge, the investigators resolved to confront Luke face to face, withholding certain details to gauge his reaction. Luke's extramarital relationship with Billy Joe Goodman was an open secret, and he didn't deny his infidelity to Valerie. He claimed that his involvement with Billy Joe was an attempt to cope with the fallout of his relationship with Valerie. This woman had experienced several failed relationships before meeting Luke Tiemann, whom she believed could offer a promising future. Now, investigators faced a pressing question. Could Valerie have posed an obstacle between Luke and Billy Joe? Speculation arose that the two might have harbored intentions of starting anew and sought to eliminate any hindrances to their plans. Upon questioning Billy Joe, she professed ignorance regarding Valerie's disappearance, claiming she believed Luke had divorced his wife. Simultaneously, the police received a tip from a local resident who had discovered a driver's license in the grass of a nearby parking lot. This parking lot happened to be adjacent to Billy Joe's residence, and the recovered driver's license belonged to Valerie. The discovery of Valerie's driver's license near the residence of Luke's new girlfriend fueled intense suspicion. Few could believe the narrative that Valerie had simply run off with another man, discarding her documents and abandoning all her possessions. On September 19, 2016, 10 days after Valerie's father, Alan, filed a missing persons report, Luke Tamin granted an interview to News Center Maine. He recounted the Walmart incident, asserting that Valerie was absent from the car upon his return. Unbeknownst to Luke at the time of the interview, the Walmart CCTV footage contradicted his account. The following day, September 20, 2016, the case took a sudden and shocking turn. Detectives secured a search warrant for Luke's parents' property in Fairfield, 
as it was the last known location where Valerie resided. Specialized police dogs trained to detect human remains were brought in to aid in the search, focusing on the house, the surrounding land, and the nearby stream. Within minutes of commencing the search, a police dog alerted its handler to something in the woods behind the Timmins family house. Upon closer inspection, officers discovered shoes protruding from the ground. With gloved hands, they began to excavate the area eventually, uncovering the remains of a woman wrapped in a blanket. Alongside the body lay a collection of peculiar items, further intensifying the mystery surrounding Valerie's disappearance. Among the items discovered alongside Valerie's remains were a bag of potato chips, a bottle of Gucci perfume, a package of sweet tarts, a flannel shirt, a mason jar filled with dirt, flower stems and twigs, a handwritten note, and a surprising addition found during trial preparation, a wedding ring. Sergeant Scott Bryant, chief of Maine's evidence response team, testified that he stumbled upon the ring while handling the contents of the mason jar, which also contained dirt, flower stems, and twigs. Bryant noted that the ring felt substantial within the envelope, and although it wasn't specified whose ring it was or whether it belonged to a man or woman, he remarked that it was significantly larger than his own wedding band. The handwritten note, though worn and soiled, was legible. It bore the message, For my one and only joy, joy flower forever. In a heartbreaking turn of events, the note discovered alongside Valerie's remains bore a poignant message. I love you, Valerie Joy. T rest in peace with my heart and Jesus. Can't wait to see you again. The note was signed Looky Bear. A nickname Luke revealed was his own, as evidenced by several other notes found in Valerie's purse during the investigation. These items served as damning evidence linking Luke to Valerie's demise. Valerie's body was transported to the office of the forensic medical examiner for autopsy and official identification. Sadly, Sarah Jean and Ellen Harmon received the devastating news they had feared. The body recovered behind the Timmins family house belonged to their daughter, Valerie. It was revealed that Luke's parents and younger brother, Sam, also resided in the same house. Detectives uncovered landscaping tools belonging to Sam in the barn, which were determined to have been used in digging Valerie's burial site. Additionally, a device for using a prohibited substance was discovered in the barn, further complicating the investigation. Following the revelation of Sam Tiemann's involvement with illegal substances, detectives needed to ascertain whether he played a role in Valerie's death. Valerie had confided in her parents about Sam's drug use during her visits to South Carolina, prompting further scrutiny from investigators. During a search of Luke's parents' bedroom, investigators unearthed a .45 caliber handgun, later confirmed to have been purchased by Luke in 2015. Luke's parents claimed ignorance about Valerie's burial near their home, a statement met with skepticism by authorities. Around the same time as Valerie's discovery, investigators apprehended Luke and his new girlfriend, Billy Joe. Luke was arrested and brought in for questioning. He claimed that Valerie had died nearly a month prior, on August 25th, from a drug overdose. Allegedly, Luke withheld this information from Valerie's parents to shield them from the truth about their daughter's substance use. Luke's silence stemmed from his belief that contacting emergency services would be futile since Valerie was already deceased. Instead, he left her lying in bed until evening, then wrapped her in a blanket, placed a note, and transported her to the woods behind the house. Alongside his brother Sam, they dug a hole and buried Valerie. Luke maintained that Valerie had suffered no physical harm before her demise. However, autopsy findings contradicted Luke's account. Valerie's blood revealed no illicit substances, only traces of prescription drugs. Yet, the most shocking revelation was her cause of death. Two gunshot wounds, one to the head and another to the neck. Ballistic analysis confirmed that the bullets extracted matched those fired from a .45 caliber handgun found in Luke's parents' bedroom. Although Luke admitted to purchasing the gun for his father about a year prior, he denied any knowledge of Valerie being shot. Luke Tiemann, age 32, faced charges for the death of his 34-year-old wife, Valerie. Despite extensive investigation, the police found no evidence implicating Luke's parents or younger brother in the crime. Luke claimed his brother Sam assisted in burying Valerie, 
but police determined Sam wasn't home at the time. The absence of any indication of his parents' involvement left lingering questions. It seemed improbable that they wouldn't have heard the two gunshots on April 2, 2018. The trial commenced in Somerset County Superior Court in Skowhegan, Maine, spanning five days. Luke pleaded not guilty, alleging he was framed. He argued against leaving incriminating items like an engagement ring and a note near Valerie's body. However, forensic examination linked all items found with Valerie's remains to Luke. Additionally, testimony from a computer forensics expert revealed phone records indicating Valerie's phone was last used on August 25th. 2016. The date authorities believed she died. The expert elucidated on the process of tracking cell phone usage to determine location, revealing that Valerie had called Luke 31 times on the same day he purportedly spent time with his new girlfriend, Billy Joe. Luke only responded to the final phone call, which lasted slightly over 13 minutes. Police surmised that he had returned home by the time the call concluded. The morning after receiving a message about cheating from another woman, Valerie vanished without a trace. In his defense, Luke questioned the reliability of the phone records. His younger brother, Sam, appeared in court, testifying against Luke. Luke had previously told police that Sam had helped bury Valerie, but Sam vehemently denied involvement, presenting evidence that he was working two hours away at the time of Valerie's disappearance. Sam recounted confronting Luke about his false statement to the police, to which Luke callously responded, What else do you do with a dead body? Despite police scrutiny, Luke adamantly denied any involvement in Valerie's disappearance, instead suggesting that his PTSD might have caused him to black out and act impulsively. Witnesses brought forth by the prosecution painted a troubling picture of Luke and Valerie's life detailing their heavy substance use and Luke's claims of impending divorce around the time of Valerie's disappearance. Jackie Spencer, the ex-girlfriend of Luke's younger brother Sam, took the stand and testified about her close relationship with the couple, even serving as the maid of honor at their wedding. Spencer recounted witnessing Luke and Valerie using various illegal substances together. She revealed that Luke began bombarding her with text messages around the time Valerie disappeared, expressing a desire for a romantic relationship. Spencer recalled Luke often insisting on meeting up or hanging out, implying he harbored feelings for her. In addition to testimonies from individuals with personal connections to the couple, jurors were presented with more evidence from the crime scene. A video was played, showcasing the approximately three-minute walk from where Valerie's body was discovered to the Timmins home. The footage depicted an officer traversing through dense forest along an overgrown ATV trail. During the trial, members of the evidence response team provided testimony regarding their discoveries at the Timmins residence, a scene common in rural Maine. Luke's defense swiftly objected to certain items found, such as gardening tools in the shed and a .45 caliber handgun retrieved from one of the rooms. Stephen Smith, Luke's defense attorney, argued that the state's assumption regarding the use of the gun and ammunition by Luke wasn't verified, as the ownership of these items hadn't been confirmed. This raised the possibility of someone else in the household having access to them. Luke himself delivered his closing statement on the trial's fifth day, testifying against his lawyer's objections. He openly admitted to altering his version of events multiple times throughout the proceedings. Luke addressed the jury, admitting that he had provided multiple conflicting accounts to investigators in an attempt to shield his parents. He asserted that detectives coerced him into giving false testimony, denying any motive for harming his wife and highlighting the absence of DNA evidence linking him to the crime scene. However, the prosecutor countered, insisting that Luke was the sole individual capable of harming Valerie, with all evidence pointing to his culpability. The jury swiftly reached a guilty verdict after deliberating for less than an hour, which was announced on May 11, 2018. During the sentencing hearing, Valerie's mother expressed her anguish and disdain, proclaiming Luke's denial of the truth as evidence of his malevolence and advocating for a life sentence. Luke's mother, in turn, pleaded for the court to consider her son's entire life, urging a balance of justice and mercy in their decision. Tiemann wept as his mother and father pleaded with the judge for leniency. Laurel Tiemann recounted how her son had changed after returning home from three combat tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, 
acknowledging his struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Despite Valerie's parents' hopes for a life sentence, Tiemann received a 55-year prison term. What could have driven Luke to bury different items along with Valerie's body? Share your thoughts below, and thanks for sticking around till the end of this video.